SMT Nation, we back. Nation, the carriers are talking. And they're doing so at this 6G summit. Uh, kind of, I don't know. I guess this is pretty much part for the course for AT&T. Complaining about, you know, what it takes to, to build networks and money spending and Spectrum and all these other things that we've been hearing from them recently. Uh, what I'll do for you guys here, a uh, story from Rob Pogararo. I'll be posting that for you here, a link in the description. And uh, let's let's cut up this cut up this article a little bit, just a couple of things to discuss here in today's video. Also in the description are ways to support the SMT and show your appreciation for all the content here. All right, so let's take a look here. The, the conference is a 6G conference and you know, you get a lot of technology vendors, you know, the Qualcomm's of the world, uh, probably a lot of the OEMs that build and design radio gears and, and different technologies. And of course, carriers are probably there too, with some sort of representation or leadership there. All right, now this quote from AT&T's technology EVP, Chris Sandbar, uh, at the keynote during the Brooklyn 6G Summit last week. And mind you, this is fresh off of the commentary from him complaining about the spectrum position of the industry. And really what it is, is the spectrum position of AT&T and their poor decision making over the last few uh, spectrum auctions and where he also complained about CBRS not being full power even though they don't build it right he he, he cited LAA 5.2 gigahertz band 46 instead of the CBRS anyways this guy's he's he's batting a thousand and in, in, in tomfoolery but anyways he said we're getting a little bit worn out with the economics of the industry. He was contrasting a cost of six to eight billion dollars to put one spectrum band into service on towers nationwide with carrier uncertainty over 6G's return on investment. So that six to eight billion dollars, he's talking about the three gigahertz frequencies that they're building and the dedicated capex they put to it. And we're talking about the 3700 frequency c-band and of course in most instances what at&t is doing is they'll climb the tower to install those radios and antennas and do the same thing for the dod or the 3.45 gigahertz which they do own 40 megahertz of bandwidth nationally and then for the c-band they own about 80 megahertz nationally uh, with the exception of dallas coming in at 100 megahertz so um you know, looking at his commentary here, folks, he said, capital investments, they have to be logical. We have to have clear line of sight to the consumer use cases. All right. He added that at and had spent more than $40 billion on mid-band spectrum, the frequencies I just described. He said the company did not want to keep seeing similar figures land on its balance sheets. Quote, it can't be a bottomless pit industry. So what you have, folks, is a man who is complaining about the investment it takes to build networks. You do not hear the same complaining out of any other carrier or technology vice president or whomever, leadership. You don't hear it at T-Mobile. You don't hear it at Verizon. This is AT&T continuing to plea and beg and complain about their financial commitments to building a network. They themselves invest a lot of time and money and resources and efforts into their fiber build. They have also said publicly, we want to be America's best home internet provider or broadband provider. They really don't like wireless. They don't like it. Uh, this is clear indication of that. Uh, taking this commentary any other way uh, would be kind of foolish because they're they're telling you what they think about the business, right? They they always they have a high penetration rate in fiber. They win in fiber. The ARPU is higher than wireless. It's their fault they don't make as much on wireless as they used to. They're the ones that decided in order for us to compete, we got to give people a thousand dollar iPhone, right? And new and existing customers get the same deals that drives their arpu down 
right verizon's arpu is like 64 dollars or something uh at and is like 55 56 dollars right and t-mobile's a little bit lower than that so the company that has a lower arpu and wireless than you doesn't complain about this type of shit you do right? i don't hear verizon complaining they spent 20 billion dollars more than you on three gigahertz frequencies because they bought cbrs they bought more c-band they're pacing the upgrades faster than you and they have even more debt than you you know the at&t to it to call a spade a spade here i think they have like 130 some do billion dollars in debt verizon's like 140 some billion dollars in debt so what the hell are you talking about dog you know the it's it and what they're doing is they're politically positioning themselves within the industry you know these are public statements that will make deposits right trying to reduce capex trying to reduce spending trying to get help and support through different whatever auctions happen in the future it's just political jockeying right i just find it ironic you know that this is a company that you know is 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 it has to build a network to compete with their other competitors and they're choosing you know to take the high road um and they're the they're the company that is building the fastest and when you look at this wordplay here from him you could see why right when it comes to wireless yeah they do have a good network heck if it wasn't for the first net build where would AT&T be think about it listening to this commentary where would AT&T be without FirstNet if this is their mindset government handouts contracts where would they be without those things sound off in the comment section below you all the voice of the people the SMT nation let your voice be heard